founder and executive bourbon steward at Art Eatables here in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, at Art Eatables, we are known for pairing bourbons and chocolates to give you a bourbon experience outside the bottle. So today, I'm really excited to sort of share with you uh, our original product, which is the small batch bourbon truffle. With that, what we're, I'm going to do is we're going to pair the bourbons with particular chocolates to give you a great experience. Um, we're not going to do a bourbon ball. Uh, Kentucky is known for the bourbon balls, but that's with powdered sugar and butter and pecans, and we're going to stick with, uh, with chocolate. Uh, chocolate has a lot of the same compound and flavor notes that you'll find in whiskey, and that's why they're perfect match. So I got started um, in bourbon sort of by accident and also because uh, I was looking for something else to do. I had started in corporate America, I was in finance, and uh, I always wanted to make something. I always wanted to own my own business, and it just sort of fell into place. Um, I had a friend who worked for Jim Beam, and she had given me a bottle of bourbon for Christmas one year, and uh, it just sort of ignited what I do now. Um, of course, you know, everyone in Kentucky or elsewhere make bourbon balls, and so I wanted to do something a little different. Um, and of course, everyone always tells you too that dark chocolate is better for you, and it is. Not necessarily always better with bourbon. Um, so I made a Jim Beam with dark chocolate. But I noticed, and other people did too, my family and friends that I had given it to, you couldn't really taste the bourbon and it became very bitter and it became hot. And so with that, I was like, well, I'm going to try milk chocolate. So, I, you know, I did some research, found some milk chocolate um, uh, bags, you know, online, and I put it with the milk chocolate. And it was like night and day. Um, the, the Jim Beam sort of just really sang. And with it being an 80 proof, it's not, it's not a, you know, it's flavorful, but it's not the most flavorful, but you get the, still the caramel and the vanillas and that milk chocolate just made it sing and you could taste the bourbon in it to the fact, to the point where I took it to a cookout and actually one of our friends was like, oh my gosh, you made that with Jim Beam. He could tell. And at that point I was like, I'm onto something. And that's really what started it all. Um, I quit my corporate job of nine years, uh, found a retail space. Um, I was able to get uh, Maker's Mark as a client and I just, that's what I did. And I was like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to introduce the world to bourbon and chocolates and we're going to get these bourbon truffles out to everyone. And so I've been very fortunate that that is what um, I get to do as an everyday job. Um, I always like to say too, we were doing bourbon before bourbon was cool. Um, so I started this like almost 10 years ago, uh, right as bourbon was sort of getting um, familiar and getting a little bit larger and now everyone loves bourbon and they're on the uh, bandwagon which I think is fantastic because the whole goal of doing this was to get people to like bourbon who necessarily wouldn't drink it um, and like I said most people are going to turn down chocolate so this was the best way to do it at least that's the way I thought so and so far it's been pretty good <laughs> so um, so today we're going to learn how to make the spirited uh, bourbon truffle it's very basic um, and actually it was featured in the Bourbon Plus uh, magazine a couple years ago, and so um, that's what we're going to make today. It's uh, very simple. You few ingredients. You can take these to a party, um, or if it's a Saturday night and you're bored and you're like, you know, I want some chocolate. Make them for yourself. There's no sh no shame in that game. But um, but yeah, so that's what we're going to make today, and you can use it any of your favorite bourbons that you like. But I will tell you, um, or I suggest, I guess, is. If you like something strong, do a higher proof bourbon um, because you really want it to come through in that chocolate. With the chocolate having so much flavor on its own, it can sort of sometimes take away from the bourbon. So um, so that just keep that in mind. So if you're wanting a really strong flavor, um, do something like a Knob Creek 100, uh, even a 120, or you could even do a Booker's if you want it. Okay, so let's get started. But before we really get started, we always need to have a pour. Um, so today I'm enjoying um, Michter's Toasted Barrel Finish. So I always believe you have to drink uh, what you're cooking with um, because, you know, you want to know what it's going to taste like. Delicious. So today we're going to use a Buffalo Trace Single Barrel. Um, you're going to need some heavy cream. We're going to have a mixture of chocolates. We have both a milk chocolate and then we have a 70% dark chocolate that we're going to blend in with that. Um, pure vanilla extract. I like to make my own 
vanilla. So that's what I usually typically use in mine. And then we're gonna need cocoa powder to finish uh, the truffle. So you're gonna need a few basic kitchen utensils. Um, most people have these um, at home. Uh, a melon baller or a spoon will work just as fine. Um, a spatula, a measuring cup, measuring spoon, a sharp knife to chop our chocolate, a cutting board, and a glass bowl so we can mix the ganache, and a saucepan so we can warm up the heavy cream. So one of our main ingredients, of course, is gonna be the chocolate. Um, we are going to chop this up with a really sharp knife. And you want to, um, you want to chop it into thin um, slices of chocolate because the smaller the chocolate is when it hits that heavy cream, that warm cream, it's gonna melt faster. And that way you can ensure there's no chunks. Um, so what we're doing here, I'm a big fan. I don't use the same chocolate for everything. Um, chocolate has different flavor profiles, like I had mentioned before, just like bourbon. So just because you're like, well, I'm a milk chocolate fan, doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna match that particular bourbon. And as you can see, I'm just sort of shaving the chocolate as I go here. So what we're doing for this one, we're using the Buffalo Trace single barrel. And for me, I find it to be a little sweet with the, the caramel and vanilla that you would find. It has a little spice. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going to mix the chocolates. I consider myself, I don't know, I, I'm, I always think of things that I do are a little off uh, focus. Um, <laughs> I'm not a trained chocolatier. I go by what I like, right, and what I think works. And so what I'm doing is I'm actually going to mix different chocolates. So it's like I'm a blender. Um, take two different, you know, barrels of bourbon and create something that you really like out of the two that maybe weren't your favorites on their own. And so that's what I'm doing with the chocolate. So I have a really sweet milk chocolate. Um, and it's too sweet, I think, to eat on its own. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to mix it with this 70% dark chocolate. So it's really going to balance out the sweetness, but it's going to add a richness and more cocoa to it than it normally would. But the 70% bar on its own, it's going to be a little too tannic and bitter when you start mixing it with the bourbon. So that's something I've always loved to do is sort of, you know, find different chocolates and blend them together and create my own profiles um, for them. So this part, you want to be careful when you do have your knife and you're not talking uh, to a camera. <laughs> you can pay attention to what you're doing, but um, you just want to make sure that you're getting it small enough. Like I said, you don't want chunks into your truffle. You want that really creamy, velvety center. So when you bite into it, it's just going to melt right on your tongue. And this, when it starts to melt, that's when that bourbon really starts to release. And it's fantastic. So you don't want lumps to ruin that. So we're going to get ready to heat up our heavy whipping cream. Um, we're going to use a half cup. And I like to use a nonstick saucepan. Um, because, you, of course, you don't want your, your warm cream to stick and you don't want to coat a, a film on the bottom of the pan. And also, we're going to cook this on medium. Um, I just sort of like for it to come to a gradual uh, heat. I don't want to put it on high and worry about maybe it's scorching. Um, so we're just going to leave this on for about three to five minutes. Once you start seeing steam coming from it, um, you can sort of gauge at that point how hot it is but you definitely want it warm enough to melt the chocolate. Um, but that is one of the reasons too why we chop it so finely is you really want to make sure that um, it, if you don't get this boiling hot, that it's still gonna be enough to melt the chocolate. So we're gonna take our heavy cream that's been warmed up on the stove and we're going to pour it directly onto our shaved chocolate pieces. This is where the spatula comes in handy. I love to scrape my pans to where there's nothing in it. And you're gonna let it sit for a few minutes Sort of toss and see how that chocolate is already melting. This is what we want. So let that sit for just a few seconds. Sort of make sure it's all incorporated. You can see that chocolate starting to really melt. And I'm going to fold the cream into that. So it's going to get all the bottom chocolate hitting that that warm cream so it will melt. Okay. There we go. So it's well incorporated, super creamy. Yes, it's got a nice gloss to it. Looks great. So now it's time to add our bourbon. You don't want to add the bourbon to this until 
your chocolate is completely melted and really creamy without any lumps. Then we'll add our vanilla and our bourbon to it. Plus two, when the cream is super warm, you don't ever want to add your bourbon to the cream. It's gonna, it will actually start evaporating that bourbon, and so it'll make it uh, less strong in your truffle. So you definitely want to put it in there when it's cold or warm, not necessarily cold. So we're gonna take our two tablespoons of bourbon. Again, if you want something a little stronger, don't add more bourbon to it, just do a higher proof. If you start adding more than the two tablespoons for the allotted eight ounces of chocolate and a half cup of cream, you're gonna have a ganache that will never set up. It'll be too um, fudgy almost uh, and somewhat liquidy and you won't be able to roll it into a truffle. So again, if you want something stronger, have it alongside your bourbon truffle or just use a higher proof. And then what we're gonna do is take a half teaspoon of our vanilla. I like to use pure vanilla and as I showed you earlier, the vanilla that we make here at home. Um, I don't recommend using imitation vanilla. Splurge a little bit the extra buck or two to get the real stuff. And you just want to make sure you incorporate this. Um, scrape your sides. You just want to make sure you get all that bourbon in there and then it's incorporated very well. And the one thing about this truffle too, we're not really using a whole lot of pans. Um, I hate doing dishes, so this is why I try to do everything in very few steps. So what we're going to do is take this ganache now. It's ready to go. We're going to throw it in the refrigerator. Um, you can do it for about four hours. I actually like to do it overnight. Um, just put a little bit of plastic wrap over the top of it, put it overnight, and then tomorrow it'll be perfect. Perfect texture for you to roll. Um, and then It'll be hard enough where you can roll it and it won't melt in your hands. So we're going to put this in the refrigerator. Leave it in there for about four hours, but like I said, I like to leave mine in overnight. Awesome. So now it's firmed up so we can roll our bourbon truffles. So what we're going to do now that we've taken our truffles out of the refrigerator, we'll let them sit for about five to ten minutes just to come to room temperature because they're going to be a little warm. And remember I said you could use a spoon. Your goal is just to sort of scrape off that ganache. Do you see that? You're going to use your hands. Make sure you wash your hands before you uh, roll truffles. I mean, if you're going to eat them all yourself, I guess that's okay, but it's just a courtesy. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the truffle. and see how we rolled that? You just want to put in the two palms underneath the palms of your hands and just sort of slightly roll it like this. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on it, and the reason is it will start to melt in your hands. And if you have really, really warm hands, I suggest keeping an ice pack close by. Put your hand on it. You'll cool your palm and then you can roll. And then what we're gonna do next is just throw it into the cocoa powder, okay? A lot of truffles, will, um, you'll find them and they're gonna have a chocolate dip on them, but that's gonna be a more, could be a more complicated truffle. The reason is you wanna be able to temper chocolate and not everyone knows how to temper. It's, I had to learn it myself, you know, it's, it's not, it's not something that comes natural. Um, so what I like to do is for cocoa, I just use the cocoa powder because, like I said, it's super simple, super easy. You can see how these are turning into balls, and you're throwing it right into that. And what it's going to do with the cocoa powder, you're basically just going to form a crust, and it'll keep the ganache smooth on the inside, but form a little slight crust on the outside. And you don't have to do this. I didn't have this as an, um, a tool listed, but I like to put mine in a colander, and it just helps shake off the excess cocoa powder. And I'll show you here in a second what I do with that. So as you can see, it gets a little messy. So don't wear black like I always do, um, but or wear an apron. Um, but anyway, so you can roll this. And you can make these a little smaller if you like, um, because there is quite a bit of bourbon in this, um, especially if you use a higher proof. The larger the truffle is, of course, the stronger it's going to be. So um, you, I wouldn't make them any bigger than I'm making, which is about a half inch diameter, um, but you could always make them a little smaller as well. You see how they're just turning into these perfect little balls? Roll them around and then throw them in your colander. And with your dirty hands, see how you shake that excess cocoa powder? Because the cocoa powder that you're getting off of that is less cocoa powder that's going to be on your hands when you finish it. And you always want to have a nice serving dish. You put these on. And I always like to serve these at room temperature. 
but uh, what you'll want to do, because they do have heavy cream in them, they're not going to last forever, you'll want to keep these in an airtight container um, for no more than about a week and a half. Um, and that way, you'll just keep, keep them fresh. The um, sugar that's in the chocolate will help prolong their life, the, the uh, cream, and it won't spoil uh, as quickly. But after about a week and a half, uh, two weeks, that cream inside will start to spoil and it's going to not taste good and it will definitely change the flavor of your bourbon truffle. So anyway, so just do this until you use all your ganache, um, sort of shake off the extra dust in there. And you can always put these two in a candy cup if you like for a better presentation. But then you just want to fill up your plate full of uh, bourbon truffles and they're ready to serve um, your guest. Or if it's Saturday night, throw on a good movie, pour a glass of bourbon and eat some bourbon truffles. Well, thanks for uh, joining me. I hope you uh, learned a little bit today about bourbon and chocolate and are brave enough to get out there and try a bourbon truffle uh, your own. Like I said, it's very simple. Um, and try different chocolates and different bourbons. That's the best way to explore and see what you really like. Uh, and also this base here will, um, will allow itself to, you can use it for rums or cognacs or brandies. Um, but if this is too much uh, for you, and it could be, um, join, uh, you can always find us online at arteatables dot com or if you're ever in Louisville come and see me I have three locations uh, two downtown um, and I would love to be able to host you for a bourbon and chocolate pairing class cheers